Hi everyone, Ariel with Ariel Paints. Today's video is going to be the first of a three-part series on everything butterflies. So if you struggle with butterflies, have questions about butterflies, I am going to help you. The number one question I get and see online is, I am struggling with butterflies. I can't do butterflies. My butterflies aren't quite like everyone else's butterflies and people need help. So I posted this photo on my Instagram and Facebook and asked you guys specifically, which butterflies do you wanna to learn to paint and what do you need help with? You guys did not disappoint and you gave me a ton of questions and lots of direction to do these videos. So thank you for that. If you're not following me on Instagram, please go follow me. It's Ariel underscore paints. And on Facebook, it's Ariel paints as well. You can find me on all different uh, avenues of social media, and I would really appreciate you following me. Additionally, if this video helps you, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really does help me continue to make content for you guys. So I really, really, really appreciate it. All right, that being said, we are gonna go into it and we are gonna start this series with one stroke butterflies. So if you struggle with that or you wanna get some tips and tricks, stick around and I'm gonna show you how I paint mine. Okay, to start, we're gonna talk about brushes. It is important to use a good brush when you're doing one stroke butterflies. It will either help you out a lot or a bad brush will make it a lot harder for you to get a good one stroke butterfly shape. So, if you're a beginner, the brush I would recommend would be the Face Painting Shop Short Angled 3 quarter Inch Brush. This is one of the pink tip uh, brushes. I will show it to you guys here. The reason I recommend this for beginners is because the bristles are shorter. It's going to be easier to control and they're not going to be as wobbly. It's the right size for kids' faces rather than a one inch can be way too big for kids' tiny little faces. And the angle tip, having a toe at the tip and having the heel of the brush is gonna help you with guiding the lines to the one stroke butterfly. So if you're struggling, I would tell you to get a hold of this brush or something very similar and try your one stroke butterflies with this brush. That being said, there are some other brushes I also really like to use. Uh, specifically, the Face Painting Shop three quarter inch flat that is not angled. I personally love using this brush for butterflies because it has the long bristles and it allows me to get a lot of movement in my strokes, especially for the uh, butterflies I'm going to be doing in the very last part of this series that are the very intricate floral butterflies. This is my favorite brush. I would not tell you to start with this brush though. If you have more experience and you want to try different brushes for your one stroke uh, butterflies, this is a really great option and you might absolutely love using this brush. Another really good option is the three quarter inch long angled brush from Marcella Bustamante Blazing Brushes. Now I'm going to show you the difference here between the first one I recommended. There's a huge difference in the length of these bristles. So although the shapes are the same, they're both the same size. They're three quarter inch and they're angled. Marcella's is much longer and elongated. This is great because you can load more paint into it and it has a lot of great flow. But if you're a beginner, it still might have a little too much give and be a little difficult for you to use. So I would still push you towards the short angled to try first. I'm sorry, my cat is crying, so please ignore that. I'm gonna go try to put her outside. Another brush that I like to use if you want a very layered and detailed one stroke butterfly with lots of layers of a split cake is Marcella's half inch long angled brush. This is quite different, I'll show you compared to the one that I recommend first next to the three quarters. So this is a really great brush. It's got long bristles, but it still has the angled cut to it. And I love the flow of this brush. 
I also prefer this brush when I do the outline of my sponged butterflies, which I will show you in this series. But this is a really good option if you want to try it. It's a great brush regardless. You'll use it for a thousand different things in face painting. So I love this brush. It's quickly becoming one of my favorite brushes. So to start today, we are going to use the angled brush I recommended, the three quarter inch short angled from the face painting shop. And we are going to do a one stroke butterfly together. It is very important when you are picking out one stroke cakes that you pick something that isn't going to make your life harder. So take these two cakes for example. One is a gradient of different pinks and the other is a rainbow. If you try to do a one stroke butterfly with a rainbow that has competing tones in it, um, you are going to end up getting muddy colors. And that is one of the number one comments I kept seeing is people saying that their one stroke butterflies were getting muddy. So it is possible to do a one stroke butterfly with a rainbow cake that's more Roy G. Biv. But if you have orange and blue in the same cake, the chances of you layering those up and getting them next to each other and then it getting brown and muddy are pretty good. You would really have to re-dip and reload your brush every single time and maybe even clean out your brush completely and reload it to prevent it from getting muddy. It's possible, but it's not that easy. So I highly recommend instead that you pick a cake that has pretty much the same colors that aren't going to compete with themselves. So this is a perfect example. It has, it's white to black, but all the middle colors are peach, hot pink, and a dark purple. This is a custom cake I made, um, and you can see an example here of two separate butterflies that I did with the same cake getting completely different results just going heavy on the dark side of the cake or heavier on the light side of this cake and getting really different looks but they're all done with the same custom cake and you guys ask me what's in this all the time too. Um, it is posted on my Instagram in uh, a few posts that I uh, go over exactly what is in this cake. It's one of my favorites. So go check that out on my Instagram and you can see what's in it and you can make it yourself. Another good example of a cake that would work well is this blue cake that's going from dark blue, medium blue to uh, white. This is not gonna get muddy on you and compete with each stroke that you do. So highly recommend you use a cake that helps you rather than hinders the process. As you continue to practice your one stroke butterflies, you're gonna be able to identify which cakes are best for you and which are easier for you to use for different things. All right, so we are gonna use our pink cake. I am going to get my brush completely soaked with water and then I am going to carefully load my one stroke. So I'm gonna make sure that my brush is really, really well loaded. If you need some tips on loading your brushes, I have a few starter videos on that as well. But as a reminder, we don't just wanna dip once and get a little bit of paint on our brush. We really want the paint on our brush to be all the way up to the ferrule, all the way up to the metal part of our paintbrush. If we just load the first part of the brush, we don't have enough paint in our brush to keep painting. So make sure you do that. The other thing that we're gonna focus on is the focal points of the face. So focal points of the face are gonna be the center here in between the eyebrows. The corner of the eyes here are a focal point and then also the inside corner of the eyes. So I'm putting dots here just for reference so that you can see where our focal points are. But the main focal point I want you to think about is right here in the center. There are other focal points of the face, but for butterflies, this is what I want you to focus on. Center in between the eyebrows, corners of the eye, okay? All right, so my brush is well loaded. What I'm gonna do is start at the top and angle down towards our first focal point. 
So I am going, and the whole time I have a shape in my head that I want to achieve. So I'm going to start here, pull my one stroke down, and then I'm going to start building my butterfly. When I get to the corner of the eye, I am going to plan on going in to this corner of the eye focal point so that I have a nice shape of my butterfly that kind of looks like this. So it's kind of going to be angled in towards this other focal point. Then when I do the wings, I'm going to come out from this focal point. All right, so let's get started. So I'm going to start nice and high at the top. I'm going to pull the toe down towards that focal point. I don't need to go exactly to the center, but I want it to end there. Now what I like to do from there is I go back to the top, I press down, pull a little U shape, and then I pull again. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Now you can do this a couple different ways. You can go a little bit out so that you have an extended wing, or you can go right next to it and pull down. I do it all sorts of different ways, which is kind of the beauty and the fun of butterflies is that you can do them in so many different variations of this shape and it's really fun. You also have to consider the uh, child or adult's face. Sometimes with little kids, their foreheads are smaller, that those two strokes are gonna end up right here and I'm ready to do my last stroke. So you have to adjust this a little bit based on who you're painting. So for me, I'm not at my eyebrow yet, so I'm gonna actually extend one little stroke out and pull down because I like the variation and my forehead's too big, I can't get there, right? I'm not at the bottom yet, so I need to do that. But on little kids' faces, you could get like one or two strokes and be really close to their eye. So you always have to be adjusting a little bit as you go. All right, so instead of filling this in, I'm gonna keep going because I like the flow of creating the entire shape and then filling in the middle. I also am going to avoid getting muddy by letting this dry. If I do this stroke and then immediately start painting this stroke and this stroke, I'm going to be competing. Even though I just have black and I'm not going to get muddiness, I'm not going to get crisp, nice lines. So I am going to do the final stroke of the top of my butterfly and then I'm also going to go straight into the bottom wing. For efficiency purposes on the job, this also makes your butterflies go really, really fast. Okay, so one of the number one questions I got that I'd like to address right now is symmetry. That is a huge problem for people, um, even not new painters. Some of my dear friends who've been painting for 10, 15 years tell me all the time they struggle with symmetry. It's totally normal. A great tip and thing you can do is if you're right-handed and the strongest side you have is that right side and the right side of your butterfly always looks perfect but the left side looks a little wonky or not quite great, what I want you to do is start with the left side. Paint your weak side first and then match your weak side with your strong side. You might not have the most perfect butterfly doing that, but you're going to have a symmetrical butterfly. So do that a few times and then decide what do you care most about? Do you care about it being symmetrical? Was anyone noticing anyways? They're probably not quite honestly because it's probably closer than you think and you're probably being critical of yourself. However, if it's an issue for you or you want to practice being more symmetrical, start with your weak side first and match it with your strong side. It works really, really well. Okay, so continuing with the top of our butterfly, for our last stroke, I'm gonna treat it like eyeshadow and go over the eye, but what I wanna do is I don't wanna go too far out from our focal point in the corner of the eye. I want, at this point, the butterfly to continue to angle in. So a little round this way, 
and then I'm going to flip my brush and then I'm just going to do eyeliner over the eyes and I have hooded eyes so it's not as easy to do on myself. I'm going to keep my eye closed so that it dries but I am also going to just fill in here with the heel of my brush and I can press my brush down and sweep to get a little bit more coverage. So another tip I have for you is when you are going over the eye of any child, talk to them, tell them what you are doing. And if you saw my um, painting kids video tips and tricks, I talk extensively about this. Tell the kids what you are doing. Um, it's really hard to keep my eye closed and talk at the same time, by the way, but I really want it to dry well so that you guys can see it um, and that it looks nice. Um, so if you go over a kid's eye or have in the past, what do they, and you're not talking to them and you're not telling them, what do they always do? They flinch, right? They flinch or they open their eyes or they do something and they can mess you up. So if you say to them, all right, going over your eye like eyeshadow, I also touch their face a lot too. So I will go, okay, I'm going right here under your eye. Here comes my brush. And then when my brush touches their face under their eye, they don't flinch because they're expecting it. So talk to them, talk to them, talk to them the entire time. All right. So moving on to the bottom wing. For the bottom wing, you want to make sure that it does not extend the main part of it does not extend past the bottom of the nose. I would try to aim for like about here, like the tip of the nose if you can, because you're gonna get a better shape. However, I personally like to take it out onto the apple and top of the cheek because that has just become the evolution of my butterflies and the aesthetic that I prefer. I'm able to get a lot of movement without dropping the butterfly uh, bottom wing down too much. If you do drop it down too much, it can end up feeling really heavy and groggy and just disproportionate. So you wanna try to keep it about here. What I have started doing is I start pretty far out and I pull a line in to that focal point of the outside of our eye and then I do my same backwards U stroke or kind of winged stroke. And then from here you have a couple of choices. From this stroke, you could either do a couple rounds, which you know what, I'm gonna show you and wipe off. So you could very easily go one, two, and then sometimes you might need one more little stroke like that to close out the butterfly and you have a nice rounded butterfly. So when I fill this in with my other strokes, I have got a nice compressed but, uh, but elegant butterfly. So that's one way that you can do this outside. It's very quick on the job and I tend to do this often. However, what I probably do more is with this stroke, I think I can just kind of go over it. With this stroke, I'll usually do a smaller one and then I'll extend a little bit of a, a flower petal shape instead. And it just gives it the tiniest bit more interest emphasize it a bit more and then I do a couple of my other kind of strokes up to finish the butterfly out. So either way, not a huge change, um, but if you want more of a rounded look, just do the little U shapes. If you want a little bit more of an extended look on that bottom, you can do a little bit more of a petal shape. Okay, so this moves really, really quickly on the job as well. Um, obviously, I'm trying to stop and explain every single step and ethos behind everything I'm doing. So 
it looks like it's taking a while, but I can do this on the job in minutes. I mean, it blows everyone's mind who's watching, right? Because they're just like, how did you do that so quickly? And it looks so good. It's tons and tons of practice and years of doing this. And I will put an example um, on the screen here for you. Like the first butterfly I ever painted, it wasn't good. I had no idea what I was doing. So if you think there's no hope or you think you're not gonna be able to figure out butterflies, you can and you will. It takes time and practice and figuring out what works for you, which is why I'm gonna show you so many different styles here as well. Okay, so from this point, I am continuing to just dip the tip, kind of the toe and almost the heel of my brush back in a tiny bit of water and reloading my brush. That is really important to do um, to keep the crispness, especially of that black edge. If you do nothing else, dip the toe of your brush back in the water and then just pick up a little bit more of that deep dark black and it's going to help so much with the crispness and accuracy of your strokes. Okay, so for this part to do the layered one stroke butterfly, now it's just a matter of filling in with those same strokes. And I am going to do this one quickly. If I have any gaps that are too small for a full stroke, I just go in with the heel of my brush and I fill it in. Do another one here. And this creates a very, you know, very layered look. And it does really represent and look like butterfly wings, so it's pretty cool. All right, so for this one, you can sometimes, if the kid's old enough, I'll tell them to do, you know, look up and paint under their eye. Um, alternatively, they're gonna have their eye closed and you have to stick your brush up under their lashes and very carefully do a stroke. Might not be perfect, might get a little bit muddy because it's a weird angle and their eye is closed. So do the best you can. Um, but a lot of little kids have these like gorgeous, amazing lashes. So you kind of have to stick your bristles up under the lash and pull. So for this, I'm gonna do my petal shape again, just cause I wanna mirror that stroke. And then I'm gonna do another one. And then I'm just gonna fill in. And I'm gonna use the heel of my brush and that peach color. So for this gap, I don't wanna leave this. So what I'm gonna do is put my brush down, get a little stroke in there cause I can fit it in there. And then I'm just gonna fill in. You can also kind of drag the toe of your brush and connect it all and create a closure there. So you don't have like an open hole in, in your wing. So there we go. That is a very, very layered, relatively detailed looking butterfly that you can do super fast. So I usually get that done pretty quickly. I mean, it could take maybe a minute tops. I think I could do it in like way less time. Um, so it's wet. It's still gonna be wet enough that I can then spray it with glitter. And I always use my little spritzer and I spray it with glitter and it sticks. I'm not gonna glitter myself today, guys. I just don't want to, because I'm gonna paint my face like four times, maybe five or six times by the time this is all done. So um, spray it with glitter if you want. From there, I have gotten into the habit of doing like a tail on the butterflies and I just think it's so cute. I drag and I press and it just gives this nice little whimsical element. It's the only thing I allow to go down towards the mouth, but you can see it's not dragging or pulling the entire thing down. It's just giving it like a nice little whimsical pop. All right, so that's the shape of our butterfly. Uh, notice that the bottom wing is really pretty much exactly where I wanted it, right? It's not below the nose. It's right about there where I said I prefer them to end. So that's perfect. I've got some nice height in the top. It looks balanced, it's fun, and it's super quick. So 
and I hope that made sense and I hope you guys will give that a try. All right, so I'm gonna do a one stroke butterfly on this side as well, but if you struggle with this layered look and you're still having trouble getting muddy colors even when you're using a, a split cake that is similar tones, this is going to be a good beginner option for you to get this look but make it even a little bit more simplistic. So I'm gonna use the same brush, same split cake, for this and concept is going to be fairly similar. We are going to start at the top and we are going to etch out a top wing. We are going to press and pull a little bit of a U shape down but we're going to pull all the way down that toe of the brush and we're going to go to the center focal point. We're just not going to stop. We stopped here and then we kept going down. So we're going to, let me clean that up a little bit. That black got muddy. So then we're going to do the same thing, but instead of going and doing our layers, what I'm going to have you do is just fill in if you can see, I'm just taking the heel and that peachy color of my brush and I'm gonna fill in the gaps. So as I go, I'm just gonna fill in. So I'm just gonna do two strokes. I made this one a little bit bigger so they would meet my eyebrow. And then I'm going to do one big swoop. Get right over my eye. My, I'm going to flip my brush so the dark side is on the bottom, do that eyeliner, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to fill in with the heel of my brush. At this point, I can go ahead and drag the toe of my brush over and fill that in. And there we go. I have a one stroke butterfly that is much simpler, similar shape, same colors, but I'm not doing as much layering. I really did get that a little bit muddy, so clean it up. And it's a good example that everybody gets muddy paint, you know, it's normal. So you're not doing anything wrong. It's part of face painting. It just happens. All right, so I'm gonna load my brush up again and we're gonna do a simple bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing. I do wanna extend it out onto the corner of my eye using that focal point, but I'm gonna do one stroke in and I'm gonna take it all the way to the focal point. I'm not gonna stop because I'm not layering more. And then as you go, you can, while this is wet, while that first stroke is wet, you're just going to fill in that bottom. Now, if they have their eyes closed, which they're going to, you fill in as much as you can. And then when you get completely done, you say, and if they open their eyes and there's a huge gap that looks really bad, I usually do go, okay, I'm going to have you look up, look up, look up, look up, you know, and I really quickly go, bam, and I'll swipe something under their eyes so it's not like a huge gross gap. But I've also let people like walk away with a gap and nobody, nobody cares. But sometimes you, depending on the eye shape and how long their eyelashes are, you can have like a really awkward sweep under the eye. So if you need to do that. All right. So there's one. And then to make an even simpler rounded look, what we're going to do is one big round swoop and then fill in with the heel. And then you should only need to do one more kind of tiny one right there. And then fill in with the heel. Again, grab that top wing and connect it if you need to. This can also make a huge difference depending on the child's face, whether you can connect those. 
there's always going to have to be like a little bit of adjusting. So sometimes you have to change the shape a tiny bit to accommodate the face. Um, but much simpler, very similar shapes and similar ethos. Uh, the, the top is a little bit extended. We're going in at the eyes. Everything has a focal point. I've extended the bottom wings out, but this one is less layered. With this one as well, I would grab and do a little poof at the bottom. See, sometimes they end up looking like little flowers because I just press harder, and then sometimes they look like more... Um, you know, bug-like, like little antennas. So, God, but I kind of like the fact that I don't know what it's gonna look like. That appeals to me, because I like the abstractness of it. If it doesn't appeal to you, don't do it. But there we go, two examples. And hopefully you saw how much quicker I did that too. A uh, little less instruction, so it's really easy. So I hope that was helpful. Now let's talk quickly about what to do with the center of your butterfly and then any other decoration or accompaniment to a butterfly that you want to add. So for a lot of people, if you don't put antenna on a butterfly or like the center body of a butterfly, then it's not a butterfly. That is not true for me. And I stopped painting bodies and antenna years ago. If you go through my Instagram, you will almost never see that. I just don't like the way it looks. I never have. So I more often than not will do a rainbow and I will connect the two wings. If I do a body or something connecting it, I'm doing this like kind of triangular little diamond shape, I guess you'd call it. More than triangular. Like just that. And then maybe I'll just take it to a peak with the heel of the brush or I'll flip it and kind of mirror that and that is what I'll do for a body um, but I maybe do that I don't know 10 20 percent of the time not that often so usually I'll do a rainbow or I will throw glitter in the center as well. And if you go to my Instagram and you look through all my photos, you'll see all sorts of different things I do to the center. But uh, very rarely will you see antenna or a traditional looking body. It's just not something I prefer. But there are a thousand things you can do. I love doing a stencil, like a little crown stencil um, or you know, uh, stars on top of the rainbow is something I do all the time. So it's pretty varied, but uh, just not very traditional looking, I guess. So you can finish them however you'd like, but here's a few additional ways you can do it. If you want to add some detail to your butterflies, you can always do dots, but you can also take a flora brush and you can load it the way you would load petals and do little like eyelets and little dots and that will add some detail for me when I have the super layered look I feel like it's a little too busy and I don't need that but when I have more open looks that's when I will do some dots or details in the body if I'm trying to be quick though I don't do any of that I just Kind of move on because it's really detailed enough and it doesn't need it but if i want to add something to it i'll throw kind of some larger dots um, on or larger kind of eyelet uh, butterfly wing detail with a flora brush and then i will load a liner brush and then also throw some kind of dots and, and detail. Um, it's all, always nice if you can use some contrasting colors so that it sticks out. If I have time and I'm feeling fancy, I love to add dots down on my little wing extender thing down here. And like I said, I just really wouldn't add too much here. Granted, I have, you know, added uh, teardrops in the corners or all sorts of things if I have time and I'm getting fancy. 
but I just don't know that it's super necessary. But you can add little details if you have time. I really love doing stars on my rainbow. Um, always have. So I love this Ooh stencil, the Ooh Star stencil, and I love using my star blends. And I will just throw some stars right over that rainbow. And look how awesome that looks. People, if you are not stenciling with star blends, this is your sign to start because it's so easy. So another thing I will do, um, even on the kind of more busy ones, is I'll throw some cream glitter onto the butterfly and that kind of takes the place of dots. So instead of doing dots, I'll throw a couple like shiny glitter blobs on there so that they kind of look like dots. And then I'll just do like a big sweep of glitter in the center. It gives it some contrast, but the texture, I think, doesn't compete with the line work of the butterfly. So I do that a lot on the job and it's really, really fast. So this is the cream based glitter as well, not the gel based. If you use the gel, it's gonna smear your paint. This does not. And I do promise one of my next videos is going to be all about glitter because you guys have a lot of questions about glitter. So I'm gonna show you all the glitter I use and when I use a particular glitter. So please stick around and subscribe so that you can see when that video drops. Thank you guys for watching the first part of my butterfly series. I really hope this is gonna help a lot of people out there who are struggling with butterflies. If there's something I did not cover or you have questions, please comment down below. I will do my best to help you. And stick around, subscribe and like, hit the bell because there are going to be more videos in this series. We're going to do sponge butterflies next and then we're going to move into floral, elevated, kind of over the top detailed butterflies. So please like and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video.